John, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Elaine, and good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Hopefully, uh, you've all had a nice short week. Uh, looking forward to the weekend myself. So today, as Elaine mentioned, we're talking about AuthPoint and Active Directory in Azure synchronization. So I'm just going to walk through some basic steps in getting your AD, uh, your Azure AD users and groups into AuthPoint so that you can manage all of your users in one place, all your groups in one place for multi-factor authentication. <clears throat> there are a couple of steps in here. Uh, we'll go through them one by one. It's It looks daunting at first, but luckily we have a great Tech Pubs team. They've documented step-by-step -step everything that you need to do in here, and you can access the help simply by going into WatchGuard Cloud and clicking on the little question mark help link. So to begin with, uh, there's a couple of different places we're going to have to jump around. Number one is, of course, WatchGuard Cloud in the AuthPoint configuration screen for your particular account. You have to, of course, have licenses available for this for your users. We also, of course, need to get into Azure, right? So I've got my Azure uh, instance open here and a notepad because I will need to copy and paste a couple of items here. So I'll just drag these things around as needed. As Elaine mentioned, please, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them into the chat or the Q&A section, and we'll get to them after the call and answer them uh, as available. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just take a look at what we have here, right? So this is a pretty clean AuthPoint install. There is no users. There are no groups. There are no uh, external identities. I did create a couple of resources, uh, time permitting, we can go through and look at setting up some policies and using these actual users and groups, but there's basically nothing in here. So when we talk about synchronizing with either on-premise Active Directory, like uh, Tanner Harrison, Henderson, Harrison sorry, did uh, last week, uh, or Azure Active Directory, we're talking about external identities. Now for an on-premise Active Directory, you do need to install some kind of a gateway software, which is available under the download section here. And it looks like I've lost my audio for a moment. And my audience view, hopefully my internet is back. Oh, go to meeting, you gotta love it. So the first thing we're going to do <clears throat> is go in and say that we want to add an Azure AD Active Directory external identity. So we say add, and again, there's always the help button right here. And it asks us for a couple of items here. What do we want to call it? An application ID, the domain, and a client secret. These, of course, are the three things that I have written down on my notepad here because I know I'm going to need that. So, so far, I only know one thing. I know what domain I'm using. So I'm going to fill that in right now. And we'll just hold on to that for a second. Now, application ID and client secret, these don't exist yet but we could call this Azure AD, or we could give it a descriptive name for my particular account, which is Texas Technology Labs. But I need to create an application ID and a client secret to enable synchronization with Azure. So with that, I'm gonna go over here into Azure. Now, I'm not an Azure expert, so I will do a little bit of poking around and, uh, you know, checking for different things and menus because I am not in here every day. I don't do this a whole lot, but luckily I don't need to do much over here in Azure. So the first thing, of course, I need to do is log in and get into my correct account. And I need to go into the Active Directory uh, resource here, which I already have done. And I'm going to go down to App Registrations. We're registering AuthPoint as an application. And if you spend any time in Azure, you know there's always these fun banner messages about upcoming things and trying to get you previewing new items. We're not gonna use any of that today. So I'm gonna say new registration, and I just need to give it some kind of a name. So just off point, that works. I'm only synchronizing this one tenant right now. We do you know, have the capability to do multi-tenant synchronization if we want to. I think most people probably want to do one tenant at a time, one domain at a time, essentially. And that's it. I'm not going to fill out anything else in here. So register. All right. So now, close down some of these things. It has built this application client ID, right? So I need to know this. I'm going to copy that. 
and paste it over here so I have it handy. Now, there are a couple more things that we need to do to give it the permissions for auth point to communicate with Azure. So we need to go down to manifest. This is a little more complex than some things, but we find this allow public client item right here. Right? So by default, the public access is set to null, which is really, you know, no value, but I'm just going to change this to true because I want an external identity to be able to access this publicly. So we save that. Now we've allowed the actual connection uh, in the manifest, but we need to give it some kind of permissions. So we go to API permissions and we see by default, uh, my instance, excuse me, my instance is already allowing user read, but we need a couple more permissions in here. So we're going to add permissions, go into Microsoft Graph, and we're dealing with an application. So we want application permissions. And the two that we want are group read all and user read all. So I'm just going to search for group and I'll say read all groups, right? Now I also need user read all. select that as well. And you can see I can do multiple selections at once. So I say add permissions. And now you'll see it has not actually granted the permissions yet. So I need to say grant admin consent. Okay, now I actually have group read all, user read all, uh, and user read delegated for this particular application. We're not quite done yet. There's one more thing we need to do. Remember, we have three items in here, domain, client ID, and client secret. We need to create that client secret. So we go to certificates and secrets, new client secret, and again, we'll just call this auth point, and give it an expiration date. Uh, six months seems a little short, to me, um, I'm going to go 12 months because that's the same as the term on my auth point licenses in this account. So if I had 36 months of licenses, I'd probably do 36, but we'll do 12 months so that my certificate here and my auth point users expire at the same time. And there we go. So now I've created a new client secret and I'm going to expand this out just a little so we have more real estate on the screen. there's two things that you want to look at here. There's a value and a secret ID. This is a key value pair. The secret ID just identifies this client secret, this client password. It's like a username. We want the actual password itself, which is the value. So I'm going to copy that and put that over in my notepad. All right. So now we are basically done with Azure. And before, actually, before I leave Azure entirely, I just want to show you that I do, in fact, have some users and groups in here. So in my Azure Active Directory, I've got five users. I've got admins, development, and global sales in my group memberships or my group definitions. So now let's take this info that we copied out of Azure and paste it into OffPoint to build the communication. So the client ID, the secret, and I'm going to change the sync interval to 15 minutes just so it's a little faster, and we save. Now I want to actually test this connection. So I'm going to say check connection. Azure reached successfully. Awesome. But we don't have any users yet. We don't have any groups yet. We actually need to create a synchronization. So we're going to go over here and we'll say group sync, add a new Azure AD group to sync. Click on that. 
And now you see the development, admins, and sales groups that are being inherited from Azure. But I can't actually save this yet because I don't have any auth point groups to synchronize yet. Once I do, I can automatically synchronize all the groups and have them imported into auth point. And I'll show you that in just a second here. But I need at least one first time group to link them up to create this base synchronization. So I'm going to cancel out of this, back out of this, go over here to groups, and I'm going to create a new cloud only auth point group that's just called Azure users. All Azure accounts. So now I'm just creating a, an empty group in AuthPoint directly that I can use to synchronize as sort of an all entity in my Azure world. So let's go back to group sync, add a new group to sync. And now I can start selecting these guys. And as you can see, I can select all the groups that exist in Azure, and I'm going to sync them all to the all Azure's user group. So now basically it's, it's like a, an, well, it's a catch all. It's all my users coming from Azure are synced to that one group, but I also want to segment them out so that I have admins, sales and development in different groups. So I'm going to create new synchronized groups as well. And that allows me to have, as you'll see in a second, I'll have four groups created. So now let's go back and I'm going to force the synchronization now so that it actually creates these. And there we go. Here's my cloud Azure users group. That's everyone. Here's my admins, development and sales. And you can see they're a type of Azure AD. Now, how about my users? Oh, look at that. Here's all my Azure users already in there. And if we expand this out, you can see their group memberships. They're in the Azure users group, everyone, but they're also in their Azure AD groups as they're assigned in the actual Azure cloud. None of these have active uh, tokens yet, of course, because I just synchronized them, but they're all completely synced up here. And that's basically all you have to do to synchronize Azure with AuthPoint. Uh, and this will keep synchronizing. I've got it set for every 15 minutes now. So, you know, you can change this to whatever time range makes for you, uh, works for you, doesn't really matter what the time is. And then I can start creating policies that use these groups, right? So now we're at uh, just about 15 minutes over the hour, which is perfect for the timing I wanted to do this. Uh, just a real quick example of using these groups in a policy. So we'll say, for example, uh, remote terminals. And for this, for example, this might be my servers that are on RDP, remote desktop. And I'm going to say only my admins can access terminal servers. Save that. Uh, but maybe, you know, come to think of it, I have an identity provider portal, a single, single sign on web page. I want everyone to get to that. So I'm going to do a TTL SSO. And I'm going to say password push QR code. OTP, I want all of my Azure users to access that. But now that I have that, not everybody should get everything that's in that. So I'm going to segment that down a little bit, a little more. I'm going to say sales. Yeah, we'll do Salesforce. My sales team should be able to access my Salesforce resource. And I'll we'll call it Eng for engineering. Make sure I have my MFA option selected here. I want my development group to be able to get to their AWS site. And I'm going to put my remote access thing down at the bottom. And that's basically it. You can see that now I'm using my all users, my cloud only group for some policies. I'm also using my Azure AD groups and users for policies. 
So that in short is how to synchronize Azure Active Directory with AuthPoint for user and group management. Uh, one useful thing is if I were to go over in Azure and delete users or delete groups, the affected users would then automatically be quarantined. They would not be able to access their multi-factor authentication resources as defined in the policies because they would be automatically locked due to their AD account being locked. And we can actually simulate this if I go and I just delete the actual connection to Azure. My users don't disappear, but they all show up as quarantined because they can't access the authentication platform anymore. And that is Azure AD user and group synchronization. Thank you, everyone. Back to you, Elaine. Thank you, John. Well, that's it for today, everyone. Thanks for attending. Have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. I'll leave the webinar open for just about a minute in case anyone has any additional questions. Just pop those into the Q&A section. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone. Thanks for joining. Hey, great job, John. <clears throat> Thank you.